right along. Um, welcome to the lesson three, and today's goal is to talk all about the amphibians and the reptiles. So, uh, without further ado, let's get started. Alright, here we are. The amphibians are class amphibia. Uh, and this is going to include uh, all of the creatures that need to return to the water to reproduce. And that is the big key to amphibians. So this means uh, frogs, toads, and salamanders. So that here is a, a classic salamander. As you notice, their skin is shiny. And that is because uh, they need to remain moist. And they need to remain wet uh, because they get a lot of their oxygen through their skin and that has to be wet for them to do that so you will find salamanders always in very damp areas there are three living orders of amphibians making up about 3,900 species they are tetrapods meaning they have four limbs their skin is smooth and moist with many glands the mouth is usually large with very small teeth. So if you remember dissecting the frog in biology, um, you probably remember the maxillary and the vomerin teeth that they have, and they are, they are not very large. So frogs do not take bite-sized pieces of, of their prey. They swallow everything whole, and the teeth are just there to give them traction to hold on to that organism so that it doesn't get away. It, it, they don't chew, they don't bite pieces off, they simply just gulp their prey down. Respiration is with lungs, so they do have lungs in, inside their body, similar to ours, but they are very small because they will also get oxygen through their skin. And there are a few species of totally aquatic amphibians and those will have gills, such as the uh, nectarist or mud puppy. They have gills, so they don't need to come up to the top to breathe. Class amphibia continued their circulation. They have a three-chambered heart, whereas ours is a four-chambered heart. They are ectothermic, which is the uh, science word for, uh, again, with the air quotes, you can't see, but I'm doing them anyway, quote-unquote, cold-blooded. Uh, simply means that their body temperature will fluctuate with the environment. So if it's 85 degrees outside, their body temperature is going to be 85 degrees. So they have to do things to, when they get warm, they have to do things to cool their body down. And when they get cold, they have to do things to warm their body up, such as sitting in the sun or uh, you know basking out in the open on a uh, blacktop or whatever to bring their body temperatures back up. They have separate sexes, male and female. Fertilization mostly internal in salamanders because they salamanders typically won't return to the water to reproduce but they 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 do have uh, a unique way of uh, of mating uh, the male a lot of times will leave the sperm cells in a packet that the female will come along and pick up and then the eggs will be fertilized that way but they are mostly oviparous which means they lay eggs very few species are ovoviviparous, which means the young still develop in eggs, but the eggs are contained inside the female's body, and that is, that is uh, the minority, definitely. Most of them lay eggs. Metamorphosis is usually present, which means the eggs hatch into a larval, or some would say more of an embryonic kind of organism, that develops into the adult. And I'm sure we have all seen tadpoles. Uh, tadpoles are the, uh, the larval stage, if you will, of the adult frog. And so they swim in the water until they, uh, their body grows into the frog body. They lose the tail and their body develops legs and you end up with a frog. Right? So that's the metamorphosis that they go through. Order Gymnophonia. These are the Sicilians, and I'm not talking about Italians from the island of Sicily. Uh, this is a group of amphibians called the Sicilians. They are 160 species. 
uh, on planet Earth. They are elongated, limbless, burrowing creatures, and they kind of look like big earthworms. And there is a picture. Now, uh, the difference between this and those giant earthworms from Australia that we talked about is, if you remember, uh, this creature has a mouth up there, whereas the earthworm did not. All right, and so that is a structural difference. And if you open these guys up, their internal organs are going to be different than the earthworm, which again, its body plan was a tube within a tube. All right, so that's your big, that's your big difference. Uh, the next order of the amphibians is order Caudata. These are the salamanders, also about 160 species. They have elongated bodies. They have a, a postanal tail, and their bodies remain moist again for skin breathing. Found in most tropical and temperate zones, we have salamanders around here. I almost always find them in big, wet piles of leaves. That's just where they hang out because that's where their food lives. And they are very common here in the United States. You have probably seen them and found them. So here's a picture of a classic salamander. And as you can see, the, a lot of people will say a lizard, but they're not lizards. Lizards are reptiles. Uh, this is an amphibian. Uh, the next order is order Anura. These are your frogs and toads. There are about 3,400 species of frogs and toads, and we regularly see these creatures. Um, I see toads around my house all the time. Uh, I find them in my garage. They're always down around under my deck, uh, and I kind of like them because, you know, they eat bugs and other pests, so I kind of like having them around. Uh, they are divided into 21 different families of, uh, of frogs and toads. All are predatory and most have to return to the water to reproduce due to external fertilization. So that's why they have to go back to the water. So they can't fertilize internally and so that means the sperm need to swim and it's hard to swim when you're not in an aquatic environment. So that's why they return to the water and that's their main reason for being grouped as an amphibian. So here he is, good old Bufo Americanus. This is the American toad. Um, and I'm sure we have all seen many of these uh, around your home. They are very common. Now let's go to class Reptilia, the reptiles. Uh, body in various shapes, covered in scales with few glands. So these are your crocodilians, your lizards, your snakes, your turtles and tortoises, so that's what they mean by body, body in various shapes. They will have paired limbs with usually five toes in all, of course, but the snakes, which have no limbs. Respiration is with lungs. There are no reptiles that have gills. So even your totally aquatic reptiles, your turtles, uh, are still have to return to the surface to breathe air. They have lungs. So, by the way, while we're talking about it, uh, a turtle is an aquatic shelled reptile. A tortoise is a uh, terrestrial shelled reptile. So, any, any shelled reptile crawling around here out on the ground is technically a tortoise. So, everyone is familiar with the box turtle. It's actually a tortoise. And... Uh, it should be referred to why they call it a box turtle. I don't know. Uh, someone wasn't familiar with the designation between the two, and that's the difference between a turtle and a tortoise. Respiration uh, with lungs, none with gills. We've already said that. And they have a three-chambered heart as well, meaning two atria, one ventricle. Except for crocodiles and, and alligators, they have a four-chambered heart. So now we're starting to see characteristics that are uh, similar to us the four-chambered heart. They are also ectothermic, or air quotes, cold-blooded. Uh, so their temperature, body temperature, will fluctuate with the environment. So crocodilians, your alligators and crocodiles, uh, when they return to the water, when they get hot in the day, they'll go in the water to cool off. At night, the water cools slower than the air. So if they get cold out in the air, they slip back into the water to keep their body temperature up. While they bask in the sun, that brings their body temperature up, and they can also lay there with their mouth open, and that will help radiate heat out of their body and try to keep their body temperature down without having to go back into the water. Uh, their eggs are covered with a calcareous 
leathery shell, right? So their uh, their shells aren't uh, crisp and crunchy like a bird shell. Uh, their shells are leathery, and they have no lar larval stage. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when the babies hatch, they are miniature versions of the adult. All right. So no tadpoles in the reptilian world. So here are the subclass Anapsid, your your turtles and tortoises. Order Testudines. Those are your turtles. Subclass Diapsidia. These uh, in super order Lepidosauria. Order Squamata. The snakes and lizards and order Sphenodonta, the Tuatera lizard, which is uh, this guy over here, very old, very old species of lizard. Uh, this friendly looking individual here is a copperhead. Uh, that is a, uh, a venomous snake found in the southern U.S. And here we have a classic uh, example of a lizard, and I'm Sorry, I'm not familiar with what, exactly what species of lizard that is. Subclass Diapsidia, order superorder, or excuse me, superorder uh, Archaeosauria. These are your crocodiles, the crocodilians, order Crocodilia, and that is all of your alligators and crocodiles. And so we look at the big difference. This is an alligator, this is the crocodile. And the big difference is. The crocodilian uh, is a difference in their mouth. So the alligator has a broad snout. The crocodile has a pointed snout. And also the alligator, when it closes its mouth, just its top teeth are visible. When a crocodile closes its mouth, you can see top and bottom teeth sticking out. Uh, and those are really, that's the only difference between the two. Other than that, they're pretty much all the same. Then we have class reptilia the subclass Synapsidia, and it's extinct, but it is important to mention because it is believed to be the ancestor of living mammals. So they think that this guy, Order Synapsidia, this is the guy that became evolved into a mammal, which is our group. All right, so that's why it is mentioned. Okay, so that is going to be, hopefully we got in under the time, that is going to be the end of this lesson. All right, so that's going to be the end of lesson three on the amphibians and reptiles. So we know the drill. Head on over to Schoology and take your exit slip. Nice work. We'll talk to you later.